Please, John. Yes, please. Thank you. Know who that is? Uh, it's all right for some. All the women they want, just for the asking. Yes, it's the women who do the asking. Every time. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but could I have a word with you in private? Why, sure, sweetheart. What's the problem? My, my mother's sick. My father drinks and my life's in terrible danger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this Casanova image just isn't true. Oh, I do a lot of mingling here in London, in Paris, Rome, New York. A lot of mingling. But beautiful damsels in distress practically never come up to me and say things like, Excuse, Excuse me, me, can I speak with you? Would you say that again? Can I have a word with you, please? Well, go ahead. In private. Step into the office. My name is Madeline Gray. My life's been threatened and I need your help. Why mine? Because Why, because I'm the famous Simon Templar. <laughs> If you want to stay alive, don't see Hobart Quinnell. Desk clerk gave it to me at the reception desk. Oh, you're staying in the hotel too? And who exactly is uh, Hobart Quinnell? You've heard of the Quenco Company? Yes, uh, chemicals, synthetic fibers. One of the biggest in the world. Well, Mr. Quinnell is the president. I have an appointment to see him tonight in about oh, half an hour now. I was just going out when the desk clerk gave that to me. And why exactly would anybody threaten your life? I'm afraid it's rather complicated. You see, my father is a very brilliant scientist, and he... Don't tell me. He has an invention worth millions. How did you know? I guessed. You see, I have an uncle. He was a scientist. Uh, his life ambition was to raise cabbages, to mass produce them. So he used to take all these test tubes and... Mr. Templer, my life has been threatened, don't you understand? So where would you like to eat? I'm staying in the hotel too, because my flat's being redecorated, otherwise we could eat there. You don't believe me, do you? Not a word. I think you're... Oh, I think you're gorgeous. It was a great gag, fellas. Same again, John. Would you get me a taxi, please? Certainly, Miss Gray. Looks like she's ignoring the note. Yeah. I think she's on her way to Quennell's now. Well, you know what they do, Mr. Devan, don't you, buddy? Be careful. Is that her? Yeah. What's all this about him? It's her old man. He's Professor Calvin Gray. Brainy type. It's invented something. Must be big. Yeah, it is. <laughs> By the way, where'd you find the girl? Girl? Mm. The girl for the gag. You missed a line somewhere. The girl, Madeline Gray. Oh, the one you were talking to? Yes. We've never seen her before in our lives. You mean she wasn't with you, not a part of it? The man talketh in riddles. Extraordinary coincidence. <laughs> Did you call a taxi from Miss Gray? Yes, Mr. Templer. Can you remember the address? Uh, Hampstead, 26 Pendleton Drive. Thank you. Yeah, Cutter.
Yes? We're Clay Forest Detectives, Special Branch. Did you receive a threatening note this evening? Yes. We've ordered to take you to the station for your own protection. Thank you for your protection, but I don't need it now. I have an appointment and I'm just about... Oh, I'm uh, sorry, Miss Clay. We've got out orders. I don't care what your orders are. I have an appointment with Mr. Cornell and I... <laughs> Going on. Uh, you keep out of this, sir. We're police officers. Yes, well, I'm the Home Secretary. Let me see your identification. All right. You insist. Put her in the car. Go on. Take you seriously, I'm sorry. What changed your mind then? Question time later. Who's oh, Gray? What's going on? Who are those men? What's more to the point is, who are you? I'm Walter Devan. You may not remember me. I met you and your father in the office once. Oh, yes, of course. You're Mr. Cornell's personal assistant. Yes. Well, now that we all know one another, would someone care to introduce me to Mr. Cornell? Good evening, Mr. Devan. Is Mr. Quinnell at home? I'm afraid not, sir. Then tell me, after all this, the great man's out. Ah, afraid he is, sir. But where is he? I had an appointment with him tonight. Well, he's just about catching the London plane from Newcastle, sir. You definitely had an appointment. Well, yes, his office confirmed it with me this afternoon. And you didn't know? Know what? Well, Miss Gray had an appointment and the boss is out of town. I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Oh, Madeline, we're wasting our time here. I'll drive you back to the hotel. Do you wish to leave a message, sir? No. Just a warning. Now, let's get this straight. What exactly is Process G? It's a revolutionary new way of making synthetic fibers. Whoever gets it will put every competitor out of business. It's be worth a lot of money. The American company has offered my father for the world rights. One million dollars. A million dollars? And in Berlin Incorporated will really pay you that? Simon Berlin arrives in England tomorrow with the contract. As soon as Dad signs it, we get the check. Whiskey soda all right? Yes, fine. Why fool around with Cornell? Oh, sentiment. Patriotism, I guess. You see, Dad wants to keep Process G in this country. Well, Cuenca's the biggest manufacturer of synthetic fibers in England. We thought they'd leap at it. Cornell turned it down. No, that's what's so infuriating. We offered him Process G three months ago. His research chemists spent a week with Dad down at our labs making tests. Now, what was their final verdict? We haven't heard a word since. Cornell won't answer Dad's letters. He's very conveniently out of town when we phone. So Dad got fed up and uh, offered the process to Wimbledon. Well, it occurs to me that somebody in Cuenco, Quinnell, or someone else, is trying to steal it. No, it's impossible. Why? Well, in the first place, the process is patented. And a company with Cuenco's reputation doesn't risk being dishonest. Look, I don't understand why they're playing hard to get. They could sweep the world markets with Process G. Maybe you're being a little too optimistic about it. Well, if that's so true, why is Imbolin so anxious to pay a million dollars for it? Why, indeed? Tonight was my last attempt to talk reason to Quinnell. Obviously, I failed. Would you mind if I tried? What would you do? Oh, I've got all sorts of little tricks. I tell you what, you meet me in the bar in an hour. In the meantime, I'll try a few of them on Mr. Quinnell.
Good evening. It is now. Come in. Thank you. Is Mr. Quinnell back? Mm -hmm. Why, but you're big and strong. Actually, it's the tailoring. I come from a long line of pigmies. Mutation. Gorgeous. Is Mr. Quinnell back? You want to see my father? Well, Mr. Quinnell is your father, yes. Would you call him? Couldn't we get acquainted first? I'm Andrea. I'm Simon. Simon, lovely. Simon means champagne. In what language? Well, the first Simon I've fallen in love with, I celebrate all my firsts with champagne. Well, you must play havoc with your father's cellar. Andrea, must you do your entertaining in the hall? Mr. Quinnell? Yes? Would you mind while you're putting the champagne on ice? I'm very busy. What do you want? A few minutes of conversation. Now, look here, young man. I'm well, not a Simon Templar. I see. In that case, I can spare you two minutes of my time. What is it? I'm curious. Why are you giving Professor Gray the runaround? What the devil do you mean? Professor Gray has written you dozens of letters about Process G. His daughter had an appointment with you tonight, but you stood her up. Miss Gray, an appointment tonight? Tonight? I most certainly do. Believe me, Mr. Quinnell, somebody in your office did make an appointment for her with you tonight. And on her way here, she was very nearly kidnapped by two thugs in your driveway. You're not serious. Your personal assistant, Mr. Devan, was standing by observing. Now I add that up. I can't. If it's true, I just don't understand any of it. My theory is that somebody in your organization doesn't want you to get Process G. But that's ridiculous. Nobody would want to be bothered. Process G is worthless. Who says so? My research chemists. They must be mistaken. Impossible. Really? Then why is Imberline Incorporated willing to pay Calvin Gray one million dollars? Imberline? A million dollars? Sir si Imberline arrives in London tomorrow. With a contract. I don't believe it. It's true, Mr. Quinnell. Somebody in your organization doesn't want you to get Process G. I have a hunch that somebody is Walter Devan. I've known Walter Devan for 15 years, and I found him completely trustworthy. It's your decision, Mr. Grunel. But if I were you, I'd check out Process G with Calvin Gray personally, item by item, first thing tomorrow morning. I most certainly will, and I'm very obliged to you, Tupper. You can reach me at the Savoy Plaza. I'll see myself out. All right, I'll let you know what happens. Thank you. Simon, dear. Not tonight, Josephine. Worthless. I took a man from New York told Dad that process tea would revolutionize the entire textile industry. And a man from Germany. Madeline, said... you don't have to sell me. I'm convinced already. What's more is, so uh, is Quinnell, I think. He's promised to contact your father tomorrow. So I suggest you run upstairs, phone your father, and tell him to put Si in the line off for a couple of days. All right, I will. Oh, and Simon, thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Good night. Talk to you in the morning. Mm -hmm. Still here, fellas? We're built in. Is that girl really in danger? No, not now. I... Uh... Straighten things out. Some chaps have all the luck. Yeah, it's clean living. Thank you, please. Sir. Uh, didn't you pick it up earlier this evening? No. Well, someone did. It's not here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm about to entertain an uninvited guest. I know how I got in here. Well, I presume you turned the key that's in the door. Oh, it's very clever. The desk clerk was called away for a moment. I helped myself. That's breaking and entering. I know. But I have to find out if this physique is tailor-made or the real thing. Is that all you want to find out? Hmm. Are you working for Walter Devon? You're delirious. Or are you trying to keep your father from getting processed, G? 
Hurt you not well. Never mind. Andre will look after you. I have a little flat in Bryanston Mews. We take you there for a nice doctor. We'll be alone, just the two of us. Hello, so, Madeline. This is uh, Andrea. She's just leaving. No, I'm not. Yes, you are, my pet. Now, come on, on your feet. Time to go home. Well, who's this? Your wife? A business acquaintance. I'll beat it. Come on. When will I see you? I'll call you. Well, tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Good night. Here's my number. It's my little nest. I'll wait in tomorrow for your call. Good night, my first Simon. You know who that was? No. Andre Quinnell, Quinnell's daughter. What she want? So what's with you? I just came to tell you that my father doesn't answer the phone. I've called the house and the laboratory and there's no reply. Dad rarely goes out at night, never this late. Simon, the house is in an isolated part of the country and I'm terrified that something's happened to him. Anybody else live in the house beside you and your father? No. Old cleaning woman comes in the mornings. Simon, I'm so scared. Oh, let's not jump to conclusions. Your father could be asleep and not have heard the phone, or, or the phone could be out of order. Just checking to see whether the line was out of order. Thank you. Any sign of him? No. Bed slept in? No. Check the laboratory? Yes, there's nothing there, but his coat's still up in the room. Well, that doesn't prove much. Simon, look. Clean cup. Full pot of tea. Well, that does prove something. I'm going to call the police. Madeline, the timing has something to do with this. You know why somebody tried to kidnap you tonight? I presume to stop me seeing Cornell. Yes, but who knew you were seeing him? The person at Cuenco who fixed the appointment. Now, that could have been Devon, even though he denies it. Let's stay with Devon anyway. He fixes it that Cornell is told that Process G is worthless. So he has to stop you and your father from meeting Cornell face to face. In order to do that, he arranges a kidnapping. With you, he failed. But succeeded with your father. But why does he want Cornell to think it's worthless? Oh. Because Emmeline Incorporated will pay a million dollars for Process G, and the man wants it all for himself. Well, I'm going to call the police right now. Madeline, turn the lights off quick. Why? Somebody outside. Lock the door after me.
Where's Gray? In London. Where in London? Where? Yeah, all right, I'll talk. Prowler is one Jim Morgan. Prison record? Yes, the Yard's trying to trace his recent contacts. If Devon's one of them, we'll be well on our way to finding Professor Gray. Are you through with me? Yes, for the moment. Thanks for your help. Oh, Inspector, I have to go back to London now. I'm a little worried about Miss Gray. They may just try again. Well, that's all right, Sergeant Black. He'll stick around and keep an eye on her. Yes, sir. Who keeps an eye on him? <laughs> I'm married with three kids, Mr. Templer. Congratulations, it doesn't show. Bye, Inspector. <laughs> Bye. Nice bloke. It's a nice sense of humor. Yeah. Miss Gray, I'm most deeply distressed by this. Is there anything, anything I can do? There's nothing anyone can do, Mr. Quinnell, except wait. Hello, uh, Mr. Quinnell. Good morning, Templar. Isn't this terrible? Simon, have the police got any ideas? No, not yet. I came along to go over Process G with Professor Gray as I'd promised only to find... It's incredible. Have you spoken to your scientists yet? No, but I've been over their reports. I'm convinced there's more to Process G than I've been told. Why the full facts have been kept from me, I just can't imagine. And why not speak to Walter Devon? Ask him why he's keeping Process G from you. Is it that he wants to sell to Emberlin and cut you out? And while you're at it, you might ask him how he happened to be present at Madeline's attempted kidnapping. I've tried. Well? He's disappeared. What? He's not at the office. He didn't sleep at home last night and his wife doesn't know where he is. Has he left the country? I don't know. With my father? No, oh, the police are taking care of that. They're watching all exit routes out of the country. If the van is behind this, he'll be caught and punished. <laughs> Miss Gray, I've known your father by reputation for many years. Believe me, I feel very badly about this. Well, now I must go. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. Yes, I will, thank you. Goodbye, then. Goodbye, Mr. Templer. Mr. Bernal. Why don't you go to bed? Oh, Simon, I couldn't sleep. Well, you can try. You've been up all night. Now, don't worry. This will be perfectly safe. The police are going to keep an eye on you. You're leaving? Yes, I have to go to London. I've appointed myself a reception committee of one for Mr. Cy Emberlin. <laughs> Oh, yes, here it is, Cy Emberline. He arrived about an hour ago. Any callers? No, Mr. Templer, not that I know of. What's his room number? 403. May I? Certainly. Thank you. 403, please. Now, Mr. Emberline, my name is Walter Devon. I'd like to talk to you about carving grade. Thank you, I'll be right up. You're fibbing again. Hello, Andrew. But I won't tell. If you'll buy me lunch. Look, sweetheart, I'm uh, rather tied up at the moment. Well, I sure you are. But you promised to phone me today. I've been sitting by my telephone all morning. Well, i tell you what, you, uh, you wait in my room just a little longer, hmm? I'm a very impatient girl, Simon. Don't you forget it. Oh, well, try holding your breath for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. Come in. Thank you. 
Well, it's nice to see you again. We've met before? We haven't, no. Because you're not Walter Devon. And if you don't tell me what this is all about, I'll have the hotel detective up here in 20 seconds. Uh, go ahead and call him. We can ask him what he thinks about Calvin Gray's kidnapping. Calvin Gray's what? He was kidnapped from his home last night. Walter Devon organized it. Are you paying him? <laughs> That's about the nuttiest idea I've ever heard. You know Walter Devon? We've met. Where? He works for the Quinco Company. They've acquired some of our patents. Devon and I worked out the terms. I see. Is it true your company is paying a million dollars for Process G to Calvin Gray? That is none of your business. I'm making it my business. Not with my help, you're not. No cause, not yet. You know, Ingle, I knew you uh, may have been a great ball player in your day, but you're pretty soft now. Where's Calvin Gray? I haven't a clue. All right. Where's Walter Devon? I don't know. Try his office. Try his home. Try Alaska. Well, Alaska's an idea because he's very conveniently disappeared. Well, that's tough. Is he offering you a cut rate for Process G? No. Look, I don't know what this is all about. I came to London in good faith to negotiate a contract with Calvin Gray. I'm prepared to offer him one million dollars. That's all I know. Mr. Malina, I'm... Uh... I'm inclined to believe you. You'd better have a doctor look at that wrist. I'd hate you not to be able to sign Calvin Gray's check. Good morning. It's becoming a habit. Are you comfortable? Mm. I have some champagne to send up. So I see. On your bill. And figures? Here's to my first time. Does anything go on in that simple mind of yours? No, not really. My father gives me all the money I need. I have to amuse myself. I suffer from a kind of agitated boredom. I met you, I liked you, and what I like, I get. Like Walter Devon got Calvin Gray, kidnapped him last night. You're out of your tiny mind. Andrea, I have to find Walter Devon. Will you help me? Is that all you want to know? Yes, that's all. All right, I'll tell you. You know where he is? Walter Zevin's at home with my father. He's been there since last night. You're supposed to be resting, Miss Gray. Easier said than done, I'm afraid. Oh, do sit down. Oh, thank you, Miss. That's very nice. How long have you been in the force? Oh, uh, eight years, Miss. Really? It's the lad that's on fire! Stay here, miss. Ah! All right, Miss Grey, now we've got your old man, now we want you. Now, come on! No. Shut up! Ah! Shut up! Ah! I don't understand. Why would Dad lie about Devan's whereabouts? You know your father better than I do. Suppose you answer that one. I can't. We're not very close, you know. We don't talk much. He thinks I'm too stupid to understand anything about business. He just gives me a big allowance and expects me to keep out of the way. You're frightened of him. How did you know? I wondered. I suppose I am. Sometimes I feel he hates me. This cozy. Ah, Templar. I was expecting you. It's nice to feel welcome. And how are you, Mr. Devan? Very well, thanks. Really? Aren't you just the least little bit nervous? 
Andrea, dear, this is business. I know, and I want to hear it. No, trot along. There's a good girl. Watch some television or something. We won't be long. There's nothing to worry about, dear. All right. Can I offer you a brandy templar? I only drink with people I find congenial. Why didn't you tell me the van was here? It's um, rather a complicated story. I bet it is. But I have quite a sharp mind. Why not try me? You've been amazingly perceptive all along, Templar. Quite remarkable. Walter here did arrange Professor Gray's kidnapping. I know that. At my orders. Ah. Well, the plot does begin to thicken, doesn't it? Would it be too presumptuous of me to ask where Professor Gray is now? He's quite safe. Would you mind if I asked him? You can ask him anything you like. Right now, if you please. Templar, bear with me a little longer. Now, you love adventure and excitement, don't you? Well, big business is the most adventurous and exciting game in the world. There are alliances, there are feuds, there's espionage. Quite often, one must step through ordinary laws and restrictions. My point is that business could fully exploit all your talents. Are you offering me a job? Yes. At a salary of £100,000 a year. You must be desperate. I am. For men of your calibre. Or desperate to avoid a gun of this calibre. Oh, now, please, Mr. Templar. This is quite unnecessary. Oh, I don't think so. I'm still waiting to see Professor Gray. Tell me one thing, Quinnell. You're a rich man. Why would you want to kidnap Calvin Gray rather than pay his price? Well, it's all very simple. Our company doesn't want to use Process G. But we have to acquire it. To stop anyone else having it. Why? We've just completed our new plant, Templar. 33 acres of new construction. Erected and tooled at a cost of millions. And Process G would make it obsolete? Exactly. I employ 30,000 men. Now, at an average of three dependents a man, that makes 120,000 people dependent on me for a livelihood. I care about those people very much. This touching devotion to humanity is slightly out of character, if you don't mind my saying so. But, presupposing there is one spark of truth in what you say, why not extend your philanthropy to Professor Gray? Pay his price, and still shelve it. Shelve a million? Forfeit the interest for ten years? Have you any idea how much that would represent in total cost? So Professor Gray has to be separated from Process G. You're not such a humanitarian. There's no alternative, unless he accepts my price. And if he objects? Oh, I'm sure he will. But even if he is careless with his own life, I feel he must have some regard for the safety of his daughter. Oh, yes, we took the precaution of... Um, how shall I put it? Uh, inviting her to keep her father company? I made you an offer, Templar. The answer is no. Why not put your gun down? I prefer it this way. You heard what he said. Take him to the shelter. Andrea? Andrea? wondered where you were. Father, what are you doing to Simon? Father, please answer me. They're taking him to the shelter. What are you going to do to him? Andrea, my dear, you've seen many things happen in this house. They don't concern you, so forget them. Simon's my friend. Everybody's your friend. It's your one engaging characteristic. Now run back to your own drawing room. I won't. I beg your pardon. I won't let you hurt Simon. And how do you propose to stop me? I'll tell the police. I will.
We'll do exactly as we're told. I've given you everything the money can buy, and all I ask in return is that you keep your nose out of my affairs. Now do as I say. Tell you. <laughs> Position. I have another one to offer you. That should be good. I want you to persuade Professor Gray to sign over the patent for Process G to my company. I shall also require the formula, which so far he's failed to disclose. You may have to work hard to do that. He's a very obstinate man. And if I refuse or fail? Well, then I'd have to draw your attention to these air vents. They were designed for the introduction of fresh air, which we're all enjoying at this moment. Some of us are. They're also equipped for the introduction of poison gas. And it's nice to feel wanted. Quite. Incidentally, time is an important factor for me. I have a plane leaving for Rome at midnight. And while I'm fastening my safety belt, I'd like to reflect that the matter's been finally settled, one way or the other. You have a nice, tidy mind. And you have exactly 15 minutes. Good night. Bon voyage. Oh, uh, the professor and his charming daughter, you'll find him there. Simon, what are we going to do? You heard the joke, everything. Now, professor Gray, I think a nicer place is to meet. I feel terribly responsible for your being here at all. In that case, you think of a way out. Before they gas us, someone's going to come back for an answer. I don't see anything here that's going to help us against a man with a gun. There's nothing for it. I'll have to give up the formula. Professor Gray, you really don't think that after you've signed the patent over them, they're going to let us go, do you? Do you mean that... Yes, I do. It gives us about 14 minutes to find a way out. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, why not? We, uh, we fix a wire from the power point to the handle. Uh, yes, but you've got to have another terminal. Yeah, There's something to stand on. Any luck with that flex? How about this? Yes, it should work very nicely. One wire from here to the handle, point to this on the floor, he stands on this, touches the handle. The results will be very interesting. Come back to work.
Put it under the tap. Get it soaking wet. complicated formula. I, I need to refresh my memory. Yes, it's not just a question of A plus B equals X, Y, Z, you know. Who do you think you're fooling, Templar? Time isn't up yet. What's this good at? Professor, concentrate. Try and remember. We've only got half a minute. Make the most of it. That's exactly what we are doing. Couldn't you allow my father just a few minutes longer? Sorry. Time's up. What sort of gas are you planning to use on us? Isn't that just too bad? I can't remember the formula. Perhaps the professor will think of it. Enjoy yourselves. Professor, don't try it! in the driveway. Take it, go to the hotel and wait for me. What about Cornell? You leave Cornell to me. daughter of Gunn, your personal assistant to Van, and his personal assistant, or shall we say our commission in the shelter. So it's just you and me. Templar, I'm sure that we can discuss this like reasonable human beings. Oh, do reasonable human beings use poison gas? Let's ask the police. Call them. Don't bother, Dad. I've run the police myself five minutes ago. But as a businessman, did Quinnell really believe that he could suppress Process G indefinitely? Mm -hmm. He was trying to do it in such a way that if things backfired, Devon would take the blame. Oh, Simon, we can't begin to thank you enough. Professor, goodbye. And thank you. Sir? Yes, please, John. Make it a trouble, though, will you? Oh, may I have the pleasure of buying you gentlemen a drink? Thanks. No beautiful women tonight? No. No one wanting to tell you their troubles? Fortunately not. You see, this is the sort of thing that happens when a beautiful woman says, Can, Can I, I have a word? word with you in private? Simon, darling.